Good day all, and welcome to another smashing, DAG, The Aviator video. Please like, share, and subscribe. Cheers. Hey folks, welcome back. So this video is an update on my air bike and it's going to cover some stuff I'm doing on my ailerons. But I also wanted to touch base on my model airplane life. I've gotten a couple of people reaching out to me asking if I've basically given up on doing my radio control airplane updates. And actually I'm doing just as many updates on that as I am doing on my air bike. But I also want to point out that for Christmas, my wife and daughter got me a Lego Eiffel Tower, and I'm going to do a build video on that too. But this video is about the ailerons on the air bike. Let's dive into this update. The aileron on this airplane isn't that complicated, but the trailing edge wood that goes on the aft end of the ribs has to be really straight. And I know there's people that are going to say that, oh, getting it to a 30 second is overkill. But the gap that's going to be between the aileron and the trailing edge of the wing is a visual. People can stand behind the wing and see that. And if it's a huge gap in the middle and a small gap on the ends, it looks like I didn't know what I was doing when I was building the airplane. So I'm kind of going for perfection. And that's just the way I am, folks. Here you can see where I put a string down the trailing edge of the wood before it's been epoxied in. And... While this is pretty easy to get lined up, the notch that's cut, cut in the aft end of the ribs does not line up exactly with that. So if you have a 32nd or an eighth inch gap there and you push that material into it, then you're going to be off an eighth inch on that trailing edge piece of wood. And that's what I'm wanting to make sure I have perfect on this. The reason... I noticed this the most is that the little, I'll call them ribs, that go on the leading edge of the aileron, that the aileron skin is going to wrap around, was not perfectly even. So when I had mounted the aileron to the trailing edge of the wing and I would move it, I could see the gap get a little bit bigger and smaller. And I'm like, what's going on here? So you've got to be really careful, folks, when you're sanding those ribs as i call it that hold on the leading edge skin of the aileron you got to really take your time when you're mounting those to make sure you're not a millimeter or a 30 second of an inch up or down because you're going to see that gap change when you move the aileron i know this is pretty basic to us anybody who's built model airplanes um, we always see that in the ailerons if we're doing this type of a hinge on an aileron on an airplane which i did on my msl1 and my msl2 but I just want this to be right, and I want it to, uh, you know, look, look, I want it to look right, folks. I know I can't get everything perfect in life, but I want this to be perfect. One thing to keep in mind is once you put the leading edge skin on this aileron, that aileron's pretty much locked in. It becomes like a D-tube. So you want to make sure that all of this is as straight as you can possibly get it. I know I'm going to use epoxy and Gorilla Glue, and the Gorilla Glue will expand some in there to make up for any little bitty gaps I've got. But the geometry on how straight the aileron's got to be, and this is a long aileron, folks. I wish I could remember off the top of my head how many inches long this is. But it's got a hinge in the middle. It's got a hinge on each end. If there's any warp in this aileron, when you rotate it, it could put a little bit of a bind um, or actually try to flex the wing. So I know I've gotten a couple of people telling me that I'm trying to make this too perfect, but uh, hell, it's my money, it's my project, so kiss my rear end. But no, I'm just obsessed with getting this right, folks. And I am using the actual aileron hinge to uh, look at the circumference and make sure that everything is really super straight. And it's possible a little OCD is kicking in here, but... One of the things I want you to look at is this hinge that's closest to us. When I mount the string and I went all the way down to the other hinge, I can set these at the exact kind of same degrees around that radius. And it really showed me uh, how far off I was on some of these ribs. Now, was I off a quarter inch? A heck no. But when you're taking... 0.8 millimeter skin and wrapping it around this you don't want to get a wrinkle in it um, I'm not sure how many of you have bent plywood around radiuses but it's 
when you go to bend that plywood around that radius, it's going to have to basically be perfect, folks, and uh, or at least as perfect as you can humanly get it. And one last thing is, folks, I don't like using lasers for this kind of work to align things. If you kick the tripod or bump the laser, you got to start all over setting it up. So I like to use string. And the nice thing is string, you can kind of see things in a global or stand back and look at everything. With a laser, you can't see the actual line unless you put material in front of it. So that's one reason I love to set everything up like this. So thanks for watching. Please like, share, and follow, and I'll see you next time. And everybody have a fabulous day. Rock on.